Hello and welcome to my channel. This is the second video where I'm developing the bipedal robot. In the first video, we did the simulation in the Isaac lab and we made the robot to work in the simulation. And in the video before this, we learned how to use Isaac Sim with the physical robot arm. Now we are building the physical bipedal robot. It is actually almost finished. The only thing which I still need to do is the wiring. This is why I have the pile of wires over here. And for the wiring, I would need to disassemble the robot and like this, I will show you how it was built. The robot is based on my actuators. So this is X1040 actuator. Actually, this is modified version of the X1040 actuator. And also I used X825 modified actuators from my actuator company. Over here, here and two over here. So there are five actuators per leg. 5 degrees of freedom per leg. Two of them X825, less powerful. And three of them are powerful X1040, modified version of X1040. And here there are two batteries for the power supply. We can easily remove the batteries. Inside over here there is all electronics. Jetson Orin Nano from NVIDIA, USB to CAN bus adapters and IMU, inertia measurement unit. It measures the orientation of the robot with respect to the gravity. This is a handle to grab this robot when it's going to fall. This is a power switch. Like this the power is off. I put it on the handle so we can easily grab the robot and switch it off if something goes wrong. This is a button to properly power off Jetson Orin Nana. And this is LED which shows when the Jetson Orin Nana is powered. And over here on the side there is a fan which cools down all the electronics. And there is an exit of the air from this fan. X1040 actuator from my actuator company. Modified version for the faster motion. It is really easy back drivable. This is why I like them. Here there are some parameters of these actuators. The robot is quite heavy, around 16 kilos. That's why it's quite difficult to hold it. But I will try to lift it just to show you how it looks like. And it's something like this. This is a CAD model of our robot. Over here there is the axis number one, actuator of the axis number two, three, four and five. As you can see I only make the drawing of the one leg because the second leg is just uh, mirrored. By the way, these parts are not mirrored. That's why they are present here. They're not exactly mirrored. Let me show you where the electronics is installed. So this is a part which holds all the electronics. Over here there is a placement for the battery management board, for the CAN to USB adapters, uh, for the IMU, and the mounting points for the Jetson are over here. One, two, three, four. The front view, the back view. Let me show you the electronics. For this we need to disassemble uh, the robot. And to disassemble we need to remove uh, these four screws and uh, the same screws on the other side. Now we can slide this top part. And there is connector over here. And this is electronics. Here we have the fan and two actuators. This is X825. So over here there is a Jetson with the antennas. This is a power board, power distribution board. This is two FD CAN to USB port adapters. So one is going to be for the left leg, another one for the right leg. And over there, which is quite difficult to see, maybe it's better to see from here, from this side, this red board. This is the IMU. So this IMU is connected to the GPIO connector of the Jetson. And it's connected via I2C. The place for one battery and this is for another battery. Next we need to make the cables. I am about to do the wiring. So I have dismounted the cow from here. Also I have dismounted the cow over here, these tools and this one. And so I'm looking how to put the wires and I just wanted to show you how it's going. So this is a wire for the right leg. As you see, it's quite complicated. 
and this is not the complete wire. I still need to put the connectors at the end. And over here I have put this one just to check the length which I need. This is actually the back of the robot. So this is a butt. And over here there are points where I'm going to fix these wires. I would continue with this. I think I would need maybe two more days because I need to dismount all the actuators and calibrate them. They are not yet calibrated. I have calibrated all actuators and reassembled the legs. Also for each joint I have installed the capacitor parallel to the power supply. And the wiring is finished. There is a cable which goes to the second joint, to the third, fourth and over here the cable goes to the foot. The same for another leg. These are the batteries. This is a robot arm. This is the PC which I use for the simulation. It has RTX 4080. And over here I have this beautiful device which allows me to hold this robot. Like this for the tests, I don't uh, need to hold it by my hand, I can just put it over here. And with this one, we can basically adjust the lens of this belt. And I have pulley over here. And pulley over here. Nice, I'm quite proud of this. And so this is the piece which goes from this side. And this is the piece which is going to hold the robot by the handle. I have decided to use Jetson with a solid state disk and not with SD card. With solid state disk it should be faster. And because we don't have any screen attached, I decided to configure Jetson for the headless setup. For this I use the SDK manager with pre-config OEM configuration. More information about this you can find on these pages. During this installation the Jetson was connected through USB-C cable to host PC. Also through this cable we can connect it to our Jetson via SSH. The default IP address is uh, 192.168.55.1. With the SSH connected we can configure Wi-Fi connection of the Jetson. And after this the headless setup is finished. I also fixed the IP address of my Jetson on my Wi-Fi router. Like this the IP will be always the same. And when we need to transfer file or folder to our Jetson we can use SCP command like it's shown over here. For the IMU I used this model because it has the sensor fusion feature and with this I can relatively easy get projected gravity vector from this IMU. First I tried to connect it to Jetson via SPI bus. I spent two full days trying to make it work but without any luck. Even ChatGPT was not able to help me. After I tried I2C connection and it worked immediately. I only used these four commands. The third command is Python library for I2C and the last command shows address of the MU and like this you can check that it's properly connected. By the way on this picture you can see how IMU is connected. Another point which I would like to talk about is that I have this simple 3D printed feet. They are from PLA thus they are slippery. And in order to solve this problem I'm going to use the yoga mat. I have bought the new one. It's quite a rubbery. For the moment robot is going to work on this mat and later I will make proper non-slippery feet. Let's fix our robot here. Like this I can start to work with motors and we will try to move actuators and we'll do some simple programming. This is the front of the robot. This is a nice angle. It seems like it's uh, standing by itself, but it's not. It's suspended. I have put the robot in the most stable position and now I can start to write a program to move motors. This will allow us to check that everything works properly. The robot is switched on and it's connected via SSH to this PC. So from this PC I can run different Python programs on Jetson in order to move legs. Let's do this.
It works. Great. Now let's try another Python code. So it simulates when the robot is sitting and standing. I put this piece over there up because otherwise it uh, hits uh, one feet uh, with another one. And the last pre-programmed move, which I have not tested yet, but we're going to do this now. So it's basically sitting, but with uh, only one uh, leg. If this robot can sit and stand on two legs, this would mean that we have enough power in motors for walking. To test this, I would dismount robot from this device and I will hold it in my hand. There is no algorithm for balance, so I need to hold it, otherwise it will fall. It's extremely heavy. I'm just holding it a little bit. It's seated. And it stands by itself, no problem. So, as you can see, it can perfectly stand from the sitting position. This means uh, that we have enough power for walking. Now let's try if it can uh, stand from sitting position with only one leg. If it will be able to do this, this would be perfect. It would mean that we have way more power than we need. <sighs> Easy. I'm really happy that everything works and we have even more power than we need. Nice. Now I would fix back our robot in this device, because we need to try reinforcement learning algorithm for walking. But this we're going to do in the next video, so don't forget to subscribe and put the like to this video. In the next video we should see this robot working with reinforcement learning algorithm. But for now, thank you for watching this video till the end. Huge thank you to people who support me via Patreon and via YouTube channel membership. Here are their names. Thank you, you are the best. As usual, stay safe, good luck with your projects, and see you next time.